knowledgeable um, reviewer and commentator and analyst of world affairs. And my goodness, world affairs taking dramatic turns. We've had an impeachment vote in the United States, in the House of Representatives. Perhaps we can talk about that in great detail uh, another day because, um, Larry, I know you uh, have been following that story very closely. We have all kinds of things <coughs> taking place in all sorts of places, but for me still, actually, the epicenter is the conflict in Ukraine. And Larry, I think that a little bit like ourselves, you must be feeling increasingly vindicated now, because today right. I've been reading Washington Post article. It says, well, let's not talk about a stalemate in the war in Ukraine. It looks like Ukraine is actually losing. That's the real danger. <laughs> now, you know, if they've been reading your articles from about six, seven, ten months ago, they might have come to that same conclusion, but obviously they weren't. But now they're starting to see that there's a whiff of panic, as far as I can see, in the air. People desperately looking okay, for want, solutions. Oh, people are here. Hang on, I want to just see if I can. Strategies to come up uh, with. And how do I do we this? Have this astonishing go. contrast of the two presidents. President oh. Zelensky on his roadshow, he goes to Buenos Aires, he goes to Washington, he goes to Oslo. I'm not sure what he's doing in Oslo, by the way. I believe he went to Poland as well. Perhaps you gentlemen... I didn't realize you guys would be on so quickly because... He's apparently not very keen to go back to Kiev. I wasn't thinking. Very strange. Uh, I wasn't thinking. Television interviews once he's... In America, All right, so I need to. And we have President Putin looking incredibly confident, to... immensely assured, back from a uh, triumphant just visit hang on. in Relax the everybody. Uh, uh, Relax everyone. Conference. Where are we? Relax in the everyone. Now, I just Larry. need to download. Where are we in the Ukraine? A um, couple of things. Track of what's going on. on the there we go. You, um, you know the economic figures. Perhaps you could. Quick. Everything is so slow so my, in my life. My one line quip always has been uh, uh, that take from Saturday Night Live. Twelve three. More cowbell. Today is the United States is under more cowbell stage. Okay, today. Still, so I want you know this zero uh, zero two six. You get the articles that appeared this week. Um, particularly okay, I want one that one. That popped up All in right. Politico. Got that writers, one. Uh, it was in uh, CNN. Um, All right, I got the three more to add. Intelligence. So I wasn't late. They'd be classified want, an intelligence assessment. And I know that both of you commented want, on that uh, extensively yesterday. Zero, zero, two, four. Um, the, the, you know, that's, that's a sign of desperation on the part of the United States. And what's yeah, so disturbing add, about is it's so out of touch um, with reality. So, you know, the... The concept of an intelligent, you know, the job zero, of an zero, intelligent two, fan is to be the, you know, the Dutch uncle. You got to tell, you got to tell the kid or something. Somebody's got to tell five, you the truth. Somebody has to sit down. And two I, seven. Not, All right. Uh, to and then I can start anyway, talking. No span. Which is what you're happen. waiting for. I That's know. All right. Uh, the that line, one. Uh, oh, the man. line about is there another the one? capabilities, and then on top of that, the, to learn that the United States. Uh, they, they made the decision to send this general a good one, two, general three. Okay, that should be to, it. To go sit in Kiev and basically try to, you know, okay, the, uh, look over the shoulder. Let me turn of, these. Uh, Zaluzhny or Zersky. Let's turn these uh, blabbermouths uh, off. We'll find out who's in charge. Very smart blabbermouths, but blabbermouths nonetheless. So I know you're dying to know. Dying to know what happened today. Well, what happened? I went in, I was nervous, tons of tests, and here it is, and uh, whoop, there it is, whoop, there it is, <laughs> and they didn't give me the operation, because he needs to, the surgeon needs to talk to my eye doctor about something, some mono zonal, monofocal, mo I don't know. But anyway, look at all the choices I have to choose. I have to choose standard lens, standard lens with laser, toric lens, uh, 
presbyopia, correcting IOLs, multifocal and trifocal, there's two different ones, EDOF, lens extended depth of focus, and LAL, light adjustable lens. I don't know when I go back in. They didn't schedule it. Um, they said, we'll call you. Don't call us, we'll call you. So I don't know, I assume it'll be soon. And then I have to go to Bethesda for that. Two hours in the operating arena, but I have to decide which one to get. So anyway, I'm still my half sighted self. Um, hi everyone, I am gonna see uh, have any of the market crashes prior to an election happened with a Democrat in office? I don't remember any. Jimmy Carter. My name is Jimmy Carter. Look, Tom, I think we pretty much had a 40-year um, Goldilocks period. The one really severe crash was Black Monday or Black, you know, October of 87. And if I had to guess, that was George H.W. Bush in office. But that snapped back so quickly. That was like, a, that was a, just the beginning of all the market manipulations. And then you had the correction in 2000. That was George W. And then you had some sort of nightmare financial emergency at the end of George W's term. You remember? This sucker's going down. That's the president of the United States. This sucker's going down. So then on the wings of that, we got President Folks. 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 I don't think anything bad happened in terms of market crash or crashes under folks. Can't remember anything. And then now we have a Democrat. My opinion is the market's heading up uh, by the end of the year. We, I mean, you're always subject to a pullback. And I think we'll have a strong market next year. But you got to remember, and I'll try to look those numbers up, that the breadth, B-R-E-A-D-T-H, in the market is, is P-I-S-S-P-O-O-R. Um, the Federal Reserve, the plunge protection team using Ken Griffin and, and others can just buy seven, six or seven stocks. And all of a sudden, wow, we're up, we're up, we're up. Wow, the market's up. And then the computers join in. And that, you know, so anyway, I've given you my view that I think what's going to happen is they're going to keep, they being the powers that be, are going to keep the market strong uh, through the Democratic Convention. They'll bring, what was that movie when there's the two guys and the person in between that was dead? Uh, can't remember, but they'll br they'll bring Joe Biden across the finish line, and then the super delegates, in my opinion, are going to vote in Hillary Clinton to take his place, and then the election will be one of the most the it won't be one of it will be the most transparent, the fairest, the most unquestioned, and somehow, some way. Hillary will win against. She'll bring she'll bring half this uh, gymnasium full of people to her speeches, uh, that most of whom are her own uh, audience, her own uh, staff, and her competitor will fill out football arenas that overflow. But somehow she'll win anyway. Tom, I I think that's their strategy, and I think you're not going to see a huge market crash 
unless something comes out of left field that they can't they can't fight. That's something, Tom, could be, and I'm really afraid of it. That something could be a coordinated um, uh, military do dollar and oil based pushback on the good old US of A and, and Israel and the isolation that we could feel in the financial markets could be overwhelming if it's just USA, Europe, Japan, and, and um, it would be a real test of the power. It'd be just like Japan, the, um, the Fed, the Treasury, and the government would organize that essentially we buy all of our new issues of bonds in that situation. So anyway, that's the one risk. If our bond mark, if if oil prices were to go to two or three hundred a barrel because of a coordinated embargo against us for what's going on in the Middle East, I'm not taking sides, although I'm glad to, but I just don't want to piss anybody off. Um, uh, if our bond, if our dollar and our bonds are not accepted uh, in in the South, the the economic South and elsewhere, you could see a collapse or a real correction in the bond market. And if you see that, the stock market is toast, toast, toast. You know, guys, I had. I had um, drops put in my eyes, and I've got a. I no, I agree with that. By the way, I agree with that. I agree with that, and I don't think she won last time she ran, but she, of course, crowed about it and how it was all. Uh, you know, you know. I can't finish that thought, but my, that's not my point. Um, I don't think. Breakfast at Bernie's or whatever that weekend at Bernie's won either. So anyway, but I got to tell you, I can't really read these things. I can read the big ones, but I, I'm. So I'm going to, hey, Rob. Uh, yeah, I've got to somehow figure out how to get to that email. I'll just Google and find out how to do it. All right. Um, I want to show you all something before the hamster will, he'll call in on his own unpredictable time. But I want to show you, uh, I want to show, which one do I want to show you? I want to show you this one. Let me look. I think I want to show you a different one. Or maybe I just didn't. Maybe I just didn't get this other one downloaded. This one. That's the one I want to download. All right. Uh, sorry. It's the nut behind the wheel that's screwing up. I didn't download the one I want. Oh, I can see why. Because there is something askew on the treadle. There we go, right there. All right, so that goes to, okay, we'll save it here. And I'm sure that'll now be number 20. All right. All right. I'll, I'll show you this one that I really wanted to show you when it downloads. But it's not there. Oh, there it is. It is there. So let me just get it. Let me just get that one. And then I'll go on my riff and we'll answer questions afterwards. That is 273 kilobytes. 
doesn't help me. That is 2023, 2023, 2023. I've got to get a new system. How can you tolerate this inefficiency? Um, okay, screenshot. There it is. All right, open. And this one I want to hide for now. I want to put this one up. Okay, this is CAUD. So I would like to, uh, um, let me look at the price. Well, I can give you a twenty minute ago twenty minute ago price, a dollar thirty nine. It's up thirteen cents. This is a delayed quote, a dollar thirty nine five. It's up ten eleven percent. I really keep calling your attention back to CAUD because you've got a tremendous team here, uh, led by Peter Boards and Elizabeth. DeMars and 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 uh, Nadine Watt. Uh, it looks like Dennis Duckin, Christopher Hart, and Brent Sun. I'm a little bit concerned about Aubrey Spack. I personally think they should just tell the guy, "Hey, it's not you. It's us. Um, I'm sure we're sure you're a great guy. I'm sure you can bring a lot to the table." But somebody F U C K uh, the Aubrey SPAC C A U rollout. You had over a year to make it work, and we wonder if you brought in Polar, the hedge fund, and the other twos from the get go. Somebody sold us down the river, and we just can't trust you. I'm, we're sure you're a good guy, but sayonara. Uh, go go take work your magic on another on another company. We're fighting back and uh, we can't trust you. That's what I think they should say. But I don't know the guy. Maybe he's he's straight up. But what the heck was the Aubrey SPAC management team doing for a year and two months and their attorneys? Why did they raise $5 million? It was their decision. Pay their, their investment banking fees and pay their lawyers and left the leave the company with no money. This is at a minimum. This is at a minimum malpractice. It's stupid, ignorant at a minimum, or it was intentional. And uh, my belief is it's probably intentional because if you leave a company without any money and you leave them without the ability to go to the market and say, our revenues are growing and we're doing this, guess what happens? They can counterfeit shares, driving it to uh, under a dollar all day long. And who benefits? The hedge funds. And then how did the hedge funds not sell stock when, the, when it was 38? I, I smell a rat and it starts with Aubrey SPAC. But then it maybe it isn't. Maybe it's the the investment advisors they found. Or maybe they just got unlucky with these two hedge funds. Guys and girls, this was a setup. They set up, in my opinion, they set it up a year ago, over a year ago. It is entirely possible that Polar and their clients and the rest of them uh, put money in Aubrey's SPAC, which they then withdrew, which is the standard way SPACs go. So they put it up. Sure, they tied it up. They're, Polar's an $8 billion fund. They put up $100 million in a SPAC, pull it all out. They get it all back with a return. And then before you can say, uh, uh, where's my shares and how come I don't have my shares in my account, they've already sold the market cap down by $120 million, counterfeiting all the way. Breaking, oh, it wasn't us. It wasn't us. It's an LLC. We've never heard of it. We didn't know. Oh, my gosh. Come on. It stretches credulity. It just stretches it. But anyway, let me let me stay away. I don't know which one 
of these board members is the uh, Aubrey Spack guy. But you've got Peter Boards is tremendous. Uh, Nadine Watt has her own uh, uh, great track record. And Elizabeth DeMars, um, you know, she could she could do this all by herself. So you've got, and, the, and others here, one guy's uh, an accountant. He wants to be a lion tamer. I want to be a lion tamer. Uh, that's, you know, those of you who get that reference, great. Um, he, I mean, he looks good, but anyway. All right. So I think that with CAUD, even this year, but certainly in January, it is a perfect setup for a January effect stock. That's why I keep bringing it up. You've got about a million shares in the float. My understanding is there's been insider buying. So the effective float could be well under a million shares. And another idea I want to get across to uh, the company, which I, I guess I'm going to have to write a letter because I don't know how to call any of these, is why don't any of those shares that insiders have bought from Brent, Peter Boards, others, why don't they just ask those shares to be transferred to the transfer agent? They can't sell them anyway. They're locked up for six months or a year. Just bring them to the transfer agent. All of a sudden, that million three float, it, it maybe it goes down to 300,000. And in my judgment, there's a lot of, there's two people that disagree with me, two people. But in my judgment, there's 25 to 30 million shares sold that are naked, counterfeited, do not exist. Nothing covered. Nothing covered. Nothing. So imagine. If all of a sudden prime brokers, real shorts, counterfeiters, the the liars behind those the the toxic financing, somebody recommended that toxic financing. Was it inside of Aubrey's back? Was it called run? Was it polar? Somewhere there's a rat. And for for these board members, they have to get tough. These rats look just like them drive better cars, wear nicer clothes, live in big houses, have nice offices in New York or wherever, talk the lingo, comfortable, great smiles, and their kids go to the best schools. And so the board feels comfortable with them. But one of them is a lying son of a bitch who will stab you in the back while they're shaking your hand. And if you don't know it, who it is, if you don't know it, who it is, you got to distance yourself from Polar and the other two hedge funds, from Aubrey Spac, and from that that criminal in my uh, uh, financial firm, and from the lawyers. Re vomit up the whole crew of them, and trust yourselves. These are great. These are great board members. Way too much talent on this board. Brent, Peter, Nadine, Elizabeth, just way too much talent. They do not need these quizlings, these cowards, these puny, disgusting people. I, I'm not naming all of them, but whoever, whoever came in and stole our 100, 125 million of market cap, Screw them. Anyway, um, the good news is there is all by itself, Data Logic and its several companies could get to 70, 80, 100 million in, in annualized revenue sometime this 2024. And that's before they roll up two, three, four companies. Insiders are buying massively, in my compared to the float. And you've got two, three, four, five roll-up companies coming. Um, I, I and I, I understand there's financing there. I believe that the investors who are willing to put up two or three million dollars, they need to come in above market. They have to have the courage and say, you know what? These low prices are an aberration. They're fraud. We're willing to come in at I, I make it up five bucks, but we want 
and I would make it short term. We want a short term warrant at $11. Hi, hi. Nine month warrant at $11. That would show confidence. Cashless exercise, cashless exercise. So that would that would show that the 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 insiders have confidence, and as the stock goes back up, they can do a cashless exercise. So they the investors don't have to put up any more money, but the market could give the company money at higher prices. Now the other thing, once that money's raised, I would tell the market we are not raising any more money, not now. Not ever, except after our revenues are over 70 or 80 or 100 million. And we, and the other exception would be if we agglomerate two or three or four companies at the same time, we may, in that context, raise some money. The other thing I think those investors, Peter Bors, Elizabeth DeMars, and Brent, me, I think need to do. They need to talk to the five roll-up companies that they want to acquire. Say, you were ready to come on board when the stock was 10 and $11. And now you're looking at what fraudsters have done to our stock. We're going to ask you to ignore $2, $1.50. And we, I hate this word with a passion. My sister hates the word munch. I hate the word synergy. But anyway, we're going to create synergy by bringing five of you together all at once. And the company is going to be verifiably worth $25 a share because of all of the revenue, cash, and what you all are bringing to the table. We'd like you to do this deal at $7.50. That's what I would do. But I'm not the CEO, and and you know what else? I'm not as smart as uh, Peter Boards, Nadine Watt, Elizabeth DeMars, Brent Sun, and uh, I mean the other two guy people are Dennis Duncan and Christopher Hart. I just don't know which one of them is Aubrey Spack. I don't believe anyone at Aubrey Spack is very smart. They had over a year to roll this out, and this was the best they could do. Are they the Los Angeles Dodgers or the San Francisco Giants? Are they Novak Djokovic or uh, or uh, Nick Kyrgios? Now, I like Nick Kyrgios, by the way. All right, let me read this to you. Uh, this is from Chris Lacroissier. This is at uh, seven fourteen a.m. on twelve fourteen. This is a uh, Twitterati post. Traders, investors, take note notice of collective audience. Former CEO noted days ago, eighty percent of the three million share float was held by insiders and angel investors. Data tracked by the Nobo list, that's the no objection list, realizing I'm out of rhythm of this sentence that runs on. Uh, the Nobo list shows accumulating just 800,000 shares over the past three trading days by these same investors. Over 100% of the trading float is now owned and not for sale until intrinsic value is attained. And I think insiders can't sell in the near term anyway. So I guess the Nobo list here is you're able to tell, uh, you're able to uh, judge the real float and who owns what. How will this look when it is disclosed, the company is disclosed on Charlie Payne or Andrew Sorkin, where all these shares are coming from? Estimated over 200% or 6 million shares are naked short. My opinion, 2025, 20, 30 million shares. 
have been counterfeited out, out of thin air. I do not buy that when they sell that somehow they hide the buying and it all evens up at the end of the day. These are criminals and they steal in daylight. And they have the regulators on their side. Anyway, it doesn't matter. If Chris is right and it's 6 million shares naked short, imagine covering 6 million shares when there's only 600,000 shares in the real float. All right, in Chris's opinion, when uh, collective audience crosses the market maker markup, the algorithms will cause prime brokers buy-ins, causing massive losses for those short. So anyway, follow Chris Lacroissier. I also want to show you another gentleman you should follow. Um, here's his name up here, Small Cap Investing. Small Cap Investing. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a gentleman, and he's got long experience in the small cap area. Unfortunately, as with me and others, our knowledge in the markets are currently being swamped by uh, regulator indifference and uh, outright theft, stealing, fraud. And no one cares. No one cares. But that'll change. And when it changes, um, metaphorically, the pitchforks will come out and, th and it's going to change very swiftly. And I think there'll be a lot of money to be made in small cap stocks. Anyway, I, I strongly recommend uh, clicking on small cap investing and uh, joining his Twitter audience. All right. He retweeted um, a tweet from Stock Alerts. Uh, collective audience have been waiting to take a position here. Okay. Collective audience, full stop. Stock Alerts has been waiting to take a position here for a couple of days. Finally got some at $1.19. Can you believe that? And by the way, the risk is the criminals will try to, they are trying to get it under a dollar. But at some point, the snapback is going to come and it's going to roast them. Way oversold here, in my opinion, should see a nice reserve reversal along with GTII and Finger soon. And I agree. I'm not trying to distract from, from that. Here's his chart analysis. Uh, you can tell from this chart it can't go low any lower because it's already at the bottom of the page. And also it's going to go up because it's got a blue arrow pointing up. I'm kidding. But this is a nice setup on this chart. All right, let me let me go to, again, from small cap investing. On collective audience, here is, are the points to note. There are no options with which to manipulate the stock price. There's an extremely small free float under a million shares, maybe as low as 300,000. High short interest, 6 million shares plus. I've given you my opinion. I think it's over 20 million and could be as high as 30 million shares, but whatever. Uh, you know, nobody knows. It shouldn't be opaque. It should be clear. If Gary Gensler wants a level trading field and the deepest and most honest and most fair markets in the world, show us the numbers. Don't hide them. And don't tell me you don't have them. They've got computers that can pinpoint a cat's purr at 50 feet. They've got computers that can track whether waitresses make six, get $600 on uh, Venmo. They can, they can give us the data. They just don't want to. Okay, uh, small cap says, when the right catalyst lights the fuse, the algorithms will turn, shorts will get run over, and the stock will scream higher, happy to keep accumulating at this level. And this jerk down here, see, Henry, is dilution on the way soon? That is 
the playbook of these criminals. And the key is these people now in the executive office, they have to fight their instincts when they're looking at this C that Aubrey Spack, Calderon, Polar, and they all, and the lawyers, they all look good. They all dress well. They went to Yale. They, oh, uh, Biff and, and, and Mindy are playing uh, tennis. Uh, would you like to join? They have to block it all out. One or more of those people just screwed the pooch. Block them all out. And uh, uh, people like this, Henry, are on the side of the criminals. Is dilution on the way soon? You know, they don't have to raise very much money. If they raised $1 to $3 million, they don't have to raise anymore. They could get to their numbers just with what they have. They don't even have to acquire anything. All right, small cap investing. Um, retweeted. Uh, no, he went down on to say, uh, collective audience is down 14% to $1.26 with the algorithms and shorts in control. Absolutely. With manipulative and abusive tactics. So today they won. Or is that one? Uh, but management isn't standing still. They are buying shares. The latest filing, 190,000 shares at 203. They've named a new CEO and board and they're focusing on new customers and revenue. And then he retweeted, wartime CEO. When you realize Brent's son's background, wow, and I agree with that. So this guy buys 300, and Brent buys 385,000 of shares in November 2023. Then does an interview and tells everyone, we need someone with more experience and knowledge to be CEO. And they get the amazing Peter Boards. Great leaders create great teams. And here's the final one I want to show you. Trading Tiger at $1.47. And this was retweeted by Small Cap Investing. Collective audience, this story is at the top of the first inning, in my opinion. Hearing the new company's leadership is committed to timely execution. If so, prices sub $2 will be a distant memory. Shorts will find themselves a bit underwater in new offices. Great time to do your own deep dive <laughs> due diligence and um, re regarding this opportunity. All right, that was it. That's all I wanted to tell you. Now we'll go now we'll go to your comments. I'll start at the bottom and go back to the top. So if I miss hellos, I didn't mean to, and I'll get to them. I'll get to your hellos. And while I'm talking, I'm going to sign in so I can give you up-to-date quotes. And we can see where CAUD is. The thing is, if a CEO and a board do not recognize that the other side is sophisticated, they're liars, and they've put people right in front of you that you can't trust, and they have a game plan. They've destroyed dozens, if not thousands of companies. They know every move a CEO and a board is going to make. The cautious board. I got in trouble for pointing out that in general, women are more cautious than testosterone-fueled men. But So I won't say that again. But they've got, they've got this uh, guy representing Aubrey Speck. Well, if Aubrey Speck is the one making money from this fraud, then he's going to be cautious and he's going to recommend. But I don't know that. But that's how you have to think. 
And then uh, the the guy that's the PWC paying at uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper, he's probably really conservative too. And we better listen to the lawyers. It's safer to deal with Polar because they they're they're an eight billion dollar fund. They wouldn't do anything wrong, would they? Well, if, obviously Polar doesn't get its returns on eight billion by doing everything right. Maybe, maybe everything, by the way, that I've said for the last 25 minutes, the whole stream is my judgment and my opinions. It's not financial advice. And, uh, but it's just how a, a new board has to think. The good news with CAW, if they act with alacrity, if they do something that no one ever thought would like, raise money at $5 or $7. They're going to go, what? And they can sweeten it maybe with a, a warrant that is plain vanilla, non-transferable, only can be used by the investor and won't trade publicly. And it has a short duration and it's at a higher price. It could be it could be two, two warrants at $15 for one one purchase of stock at $5, nine months, and cashless exercise, so that the company is going to have visibility on new financing at much higher prices in the future, and it'll shock the shorts. And then you make a simultaneous statement, you make a simultaneous statement, we are not going to raise any more money. This, whatever it is, one, two, three million, will get us all the way through all milestones. And if the criminals want to drive the stock price down so that the CEOs of the five companies that were willing to join back away, well, fine. We'll just wait. We'll build our own revenues and our own cash flows using the technologies, our superior technology, and the teams we already have. But I think they should talk to those four or five companies, get them virtually in a room. Peter Boards, Elizabeth DeMars, and uh, uh, Nadine Watt and Brent should turn on their charm, their brain power, their watt, watt power, and they should say, you guys, Come join us all at the same time. Sign here, here, and here. We're going to announce it all at once that we just rolled up five companies. And instead of being 70 million in annualized revenue, we're going to be 250 million in annualized revenue. And we've hit the ground running. And that all of you were willing to do the offer at $7.50. And by the way, by joining at the same time, all of a sudden, using the 1.7 to 2x metric, which is in the filings, which uh, uh, mentor group confirmed, evaluation group. When you multiply out the 1.7 by 250 million and, and, and these teams, our stock should be 35. I don't know, I'm making it up. That's how you hit the shorts. Hit them. You, number one, you can't trust anyone that was associated with Aubrey. You can't trust anyone with Cauldron. And you can't trust anyone with those three hedge funds. Is that a broad brush to paint? And you can't trust any of those lawyers. Is that a broad brush? Well, how are you going to prove it? If you're going to go with the idea, we're, it's America. We're going to trust all of them until proven differently. Well, good luck getting your stock over a dollar. No, purge them all. Sorry, it's not you, it's me. I can't trust you. Somebody destroyed 125, 150 million in market cap, took it out of my investors' pockets, and they did it while they're smiling at me and shaking my hand. I don't know which one of you it is, I'm firing all of you, including the, the one that's on the board. That's how I think that's what has to happen. Anyway, uh, I'm sure I'm just repeating myself. 
making myself looking look mentally unhinged. Not being reasonable. We we went to Yale and we don't talk that way. Oh no, do, do you realize these these people are from the from the United Kingdom and, and Canada and France and and they used to work at Goldman Sachs and they have a great CV. How can you talk about them like that? Well, look at what happened to the stock price. That wasn't chance. That wasn't happenstance. That wasn't bad luck. This has been planned for for over a year. Anyway, those are my opinions. But the good news is, I think CAUD can snap back like a some bitch. And it can make you a lot of money. I think it's a perfect setup for a January a January trade. Let's see. In other words, you buy it now. The other people are selling, and then they're going to buy it back in 31 days. CAUD is perfect. Look at it. 142.5, up 16 cents. That's pretty good. All right, let's go from the bottom to the top, and we go down the da and the. And we'd start it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember. You know that Beatles song, Helter Skelter? Um, Anna just sent me a, a piece from... Sessions office. I can't tell if it's good or not. It doesn't look good to me. Congressman Sessions. <clears throat> Congressman Sessions introduces legislation to protect investor autonomy. In other words, they can hide. Anyway. I'm a loser. I'm not what I thought to be. I'm a loser. I know it was Charles Manson, but you know who wrote it? Um, Paul McCartney. Hey, thank you, Scott. <laughs> All right, let me. I know if I can get the Linsky. Zibilinski, Zibilinski, Scott Zibilinski. Just ignore the PR. I don't know. All right, let me see what Adam is saying. I missed Adam's uh, point. Maybe it. Isn't that something? And she um, she didn't look at, well, I don't know when the picture was taken, but she didn't look like she would felt guilty about it. Um, all right, let's see how you say it. Prez Belinsky. Oh, I should have figured, yeah. Okay, Prez Belinsky. Prez Belinsky. All right, I got to practice that. Scott Prez Belinsky. Prez Belinsky. <laughs> if you ignore the PR, yeah. No, you haven't missed Ham. Uh, Ham's on his own uh, schedule, and he will call in if he if he wants to. I know he's meeting with people, and he's trying to make things happen. But um, uh, Price DW DFW. Um, I expect that he'll call in at some point and he'll say to me, are you on? Are you live? All right, let's go. So anyway, you haven't missed him yet, B. Price. And he'll be much more interesting than me. All right, let's say jo uh, Jana, 
Um, no, it's the intro of H.R. 6783 regulations by Sessions, which is the bill we wanted passed previously. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for clarifying. I can't get up back to the top. I know, Rodney, and it's because, in my opinion, if you go after $4 million in fraud against her, it's just one person. It stops there. You can ring fence it. The problem, if they come after the fraud that's in our stocks, they can't ring fence it. It's going to spill over and over. And then the donors, Ken, Ken Griffin's, uh, Stevie Collins and the rest, they're in jail. They can't give you money. Oh, he's a great guy. He bought the Mets. He's bringing baseball back to New York. Can't believe. Um, well, Kevin, I th I actually think Finger looks good in terms of its trading. That's that's different than all the fundamental. But to me, Finger is showing strength uh, in the face of all these odd, odds. How does that lyric go? I came for you. I came for you. But you did not meet my urgency. I came for you. I came for you. But you were one long. Oh, that's how it starts. I know that beginning part. Princess card, she sends me. With her regards. Oh, bar room, I shine vacancy. To see her, you've got to look hard. Wounded deep in battle. I stand stuffed like some soldier undaunted. To her Cheshire smile, I'll stand on file. She's all I ever wanted. I think I got it. You let your blue wall stand in the way of these facts, honey. Get your carpet backers off my back. Girl, give me time to cover my tracks. You said, here's your mirror and your ball and jacks but they're not what I came for. Oh, I came for so much more. And I know you know that too. And I know you know that's true. Crawl into my ambulance. Your pulse is getting weak. Reveal yourself all to me now while you've got the strength to speak. Because they're waiting for you at Bellevue with their oxygen mask. But I could give it all to you now if only you would ask. Don't call for your surgeon. Even he says it's too late. It's not your lungs this time, but your heart holds your fate. Don't give me my money back. Don't want it anymore. It's not that nursery mouth I came back for. It's not the way you're stretched out on the floor. I've broken all your windows and I've rammed through all your doors. Who am I to ask you to fight my wars? And you should know that's true. You should know that too. Anyway, that's, I guess that's not the song where he says, your strength is devastating in the face of all these odds. What song is that? Your strength is devastating in the face of all these odds. See what song that is. It is for you, but I didn't find it. Or maybe I read it to you. Anyway. All right. Um, same song. <laughs> it's the same. I just found out it's the same song. But that's the point. We have to be strong in the face of all those odds. And, and the board has to, we have to zag when they zig. And we've got to have a better game plan. And we've got to exercise it, implement it precisely. The good news is the, the criminals, 
once we extricate ourselves from this ditch or this quick stand, they'll go away. They'll move on to something easier. They don't care about us. We're all worried about treating them like gentlemen and gentlewomen. They don't care. They just want the money. It's all they want. They're psychopathical. Is that a word? Is it correct for E-Trade to say I need to pay to get my special dividend shares? Yeah, I think so. It depends on how much. It depends on how much. Um, I used to have a certificate that I, unfortunately, I sent it in. But when you get a stock certificate with a restricted legend on it, maybe I can find a copy of the Xerox I took to show you. It'll be downstairs, so I, I'll, I'll, I won't do it now. But they have to send that into the transfer agent with the letter that GTII wrote. And they, they have to get your signature on, on a stock power, probably, or a letter. They'll tell you. Anyway, they send it in. They'll they'll do it overnight by FedEx or DHL. And then it goes to the transfer agent. The transfer agent might charge a small amount. They do charge. And then they FedEx it back. So, yeah, I think, uh, uh, I don't know what, something in the $100 range probably is fair, $150, $75, something like that. Um, yeah, I think it's okay that they charge. I just don't think it should be a, way out of line. I've seen some people, they say they charge 300. I think that's too much. 150. You know, Adam, what's weird is I, I was at E-Trade and when I called in about next bridge, I don't know. Let's see when this is dated. Um, August 1, I got this. So when I called back in at the beginning of the year, they they quoted me something like $260 or $280 a certificate. I said, no, nah, not, that's not right. I, you know, I did my whole, do you know who I am routine? And um, then I called in again and they, they said it would be something different, 100 or 150. And I said, no, nah, let me think about it. And then I called in again. And it was going to be $60. I said, all right, I'll do that. And then when they did it, they didn't charge me the 60. They just did it for free. I guess they figured out who I was. That's just a joke. It's not serious. I'm not anybody. I hear all great comedians are very humble. Some comedians have a lot to be humble about. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I don't know why, but it keeps coming up in my life. The whole idea that basically we should put our egos where the sun don't shine and be humble, you know? I got to get up to the top. Um, I've seen some street singers that, well, yeah. You know who's, uh, uh, there's one singer out there that doesn't sound any good outside of the studio. I'm trying to remember. I can't. It's been a, it's been a while, but I, I went. <laughs> That's why I'm not humble. Because <laughs> you're not a good comedian. Oh, you're slaying me. You're slaying me. All right. Um. <laughs> Claw and order. Only great comedians are humble. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, 
trying to catch up. I think that's a good mama duck. Um, my opinion, and I and I'll be full. I I obviously transferred. These are transferred shares out of my regular account. I did it, but out of my IRA, I keep vacillating. Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Shouldn't I? The the number one. There's two reasons I feel I should leave it in my IRA. One is. I should experience what you guys experience so I know about it. Uh, the second issue is it's in my IRA. So whatever settlement we get, it's tax deferred. And, and that's those are my two reasons to leave it. But Mama Duck, my strongest reason for you to move to AST is that's real. MMTLP is just an IOU signed by criminals and Wall Street. You'll get, we'll, we'll get a settlement. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's just a check you can't cash um, unless uh, and after a whole group of people come to a decision to settle. Anyway, my, my main reason that you should move it to AST is that you have something valuable. It's a private company. Once those 30 million remaining seats at AST are full, I think there's going to be a lot of regret that people didn't move over. So just move while people are hesitating. That's my opinion. I can't give you financial personal advice. I don't know you. But I think $75 is perfectly reasonable. You could ask them if they'd do it for free. Not legal advice is a very smart guy. You have seen the E Street Band with Bruce? With Bruce? I've seen Bruce. The boss, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. I think I've seen him one, two, three. I think I've seen him as many times as I've seen the Rolling Stones. I remember when he, the Cap Center, which I think has been torn down, we went out to it and... Uh, <laughs> My girlfriend, we had a fight. Uh, the woman, they had put some extra chairs in because it was an overflow crowd. So the woman in front of me, a young woman, kept, every time she stood up, she'd slam her chair back and it was a temporary chair and it would hit both of my knees. So I, and the music was so loud, I had to, I, I leaned down to tell her, could you please not bang your chair back into my knees? She couldn't hear me. I had to lean closer and yell, could you please not? And I, was, I wasn't I was angry. I just, but I'm leaning in and my girlfriend goes, when I stand back up, who is that? Why were you talking to her? I said some wise ass thing. I don't know, remember what I said. But I said something wise ass and my girlfriend poured her entire beer on top of me and left me alone in the concert. Anyway, um, I remember Bruce Springsteen saying my hometown and 40, whatever it was, 40,000 people all went totally silent. It was unbelievable. That, he was a good, that was a good show. There you go. Thanks in Iceland, a lot went down, but the ones run, run by women fared better because they took, well, that's my exactly my point. I'm not trying to be disparaging. I'm trying to say um, there's, there are differences in approach and women own the most financial, women 
own more financial assets in the United States than men. I heard that from a, a guy that owns his own brokerage firm that I trust, and I, I've never found it in writing, but that's where my source is. <laughs> Better singer than I am. I'm a terrible singer, but guess what? I came for you, I came for you, but you did not meet my urgency. All right, let's go to the top. I can't get back there unless I just go. Hi, Gerald. Hi, uh, Narad. Hi, Ruby. Ruby. Don't take your love to town. It wasn't me who started that old crazy Asian war. But I went and did my patriotic chore. I had a gun, I'd put you in the ground. No Ruby. Capote Joe, Dips Patel. I'm going to go through these quickly. Uh, Augustine, David Duty, uh, CJ Yukon, Husker Power, Agent Orens, Scott, Henry Perez. Red Pepper Ronnie, Rick L. Buck Thanar, Hector, Damon Wiggs, The One, <laughs> The One, great name, Brian Mann, um, Linda Talley, UK Sun, Frank, Frank Anastasio, ah, Frank Anastasio. Um, P money. I already said hi to Rob. 87 was Reagan. Let me think quickly. 87 was Reagan. That's right. 80 to 88. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, link to Congress. Is there something going on in Congress? The markets are... I know, folks. Oh, God. I pulled the wool over my eyes. <laughs> ah, I was insufferable in my support of folks. Dot com crash was ridiculously bad. Yeah. I got hammered in it, but I made my money back. Um, my friend from London called me and he gave me a list of stocks literally in March, beginning of March. And he said, you've, you've got to buy this, 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 this. I put like 80 or 100,000 in them. And, and I thought, God, he, he knows I did it. I, I think the next day they all crashed and the, and the crash started and it went. But what I did, instead of selling... I sold calls, short-term calls. I always did short-term calls the next week, the next, you know, two weeks out. I would sell calls above the market. I tried to get 50 cents or better in each position. And then they expired and I'd do it again. And I knew that if the stock went up, I might be exercised or I might not, but I didn't care. I was just trying to get a higher price than where the stock was then. Anyway, by by September or August, I had broken even by doing that. So I got back to even, but man, what bad timing. Uh, GDC. <laughs> um, I don't know that it is de Quateau. I don't know anything about it other than Ham has mentioned it. But I, I think I know who the big whale is in it. And um, just based on those two, that's the only data points I have, it would be good enough for me to for a trade. So I don't think it's a block of baloney. Weekend of Bernie's, that's it. Hi, Ambie.
Well, I don't know. I'm not going to go look now. There are, there are, um, I mean, I know one thing I can give you a quick answer to. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'd have to go to charts to tell you. I, I'd have to go to charts to tell you when the crashes were. But, I mean, you can simply, um, Google it. The 10th largest short squeeze of all time in 1980s was Reliance Industries Limited. Um, the symbol was I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, I don't know what the symbol was. Um, in three days, it was an Indian company. Um, this doesn't say how much. But Reliance Industries, in the late 1980s, Manu Manek, otherwise known as the Cobra of the Bombay stock market, attributable to his short-selling exploits, tried to short the shares of Reliance Industries. At the time, Reliance was emerging as a major playing player in the Indian business industry with Dhrami Abamni leading the company. Blah, blah, blah. As Manek tried to short the shares, Reliance chief asked his close lieutenant, Anad Jain, to mount a defense. Jain, through a body known as Friends of Reliance, started buying back all the shares that which were being shorted. Eventually, as more stock was sold by Manek and bought by Jain, the share price started rising again. In the ensuing chaos, as the bear trader started losing huge amounts of money, the exchange shut for three days. These three days allowed Manic and Ambri Abani to reach a compromise settlement that led to 30 million in losses for Manek. It's the ninth largest stock exchange in the world with a market cap of 3 trillion. Just like GameStop, Tesla, Clover Health, AMC, Alibaba, Reliance Industry Limited features on our list of 10 short squeezes, 10 biggest short squeezes of all time. Number nine, Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly was the first self-service grocery store in the United States. It opened for business in 1916 in Memphis. And it ra expanded rapidly. It is the predecessor to the supermarket chains of today. Within six years, they had more than a thousand Piggly Wiggly stores in the country. It went public in 1922 and looked set for further growth. However, towards the fall of 1922, some franchises of Piggly Wiggly went bankrupt. Although these were not wholly owned by Clarence Saunders, the owner, there was some tension around the firm on Wall Street. Traders started short selling the stock in anticipation of a further crash in the stock price. Saunders decided to challenge the market himself, taking out a $10 million loan, that's 100 years ago, to buy back the stock. By the spring of 1923, Saunders controlled more than 99% of Piggly Wiggly, which was around 200,000 shares. From the low of $39, the stock climbed to $60 as Saunders regained control. However, he did not stop there. He started selling these shares to the public at a fixed price and bypassed the stock exchange, calling for a return of thousands of Piggly Wiggly shares, which he had 
he had loaned to short sellers. This pushed Piggly Wiggly. He wasn't Piggly, was he? Piggly Wiggly stock to $124 a share. Soon thereafter, the exchange suspended stock trading and gave short sellers time to return the shares they owned. Eventure Saunders settled at $100 a share and took in millions in losses. Eight, Harlem Railroad. Cornel this one I read about and know about from my reading of, uh, of Cornelius Vanderbilt's uh, biography. Cornelius Vanderbilt, the man at the center of Harlem and Hudson Railroad short squeezes, was one of the richest men in America when he started dabbling in the railroad business. Legend has it that Vanderbilt was even the sole survivor of one of the first deadly rail accidents in 1850s. By the 1860s, he had his sights on acquiring the Harlem Rail and Hudson Rail, two undervalued properties that also happened to be the only two rail lines allowed into Manhattan. As Vanderbilt bought his stake in the firm, there were short sellers squeezing the stock. Some of the people shorting the stock were very influential, including members of the New York City Council and the board of directors of Harlem Rail. Daniel Drew, a longtime rival of Vanderbilt and successful trader on Wall Street, was among them. As Vanderbilt continued to buy, buy what short sellers sold, the share price started rising even as attempts were made to disrupt it, like the cancellation of a bill authorizing Harlem Rail to lay double track. Eventually, Vanderbilt gained control of Harlem Rail through this strategy of buying. The short sellers had lost a ton of money on the Harlem Rail now they turned their attention to Hudson Rail amid speculation that Vanderbilt had used up his fortune on Harlem Rail and would be in no position to protect Hudson Rail. However, they had miscalculated and again found themselves at the mercy of Vanderbilt when they had to return the loan shares. This allowed Vanderbilt to gain full control of Hudson Rail as well. A last-ditch attempt was made by Daniel Drew to short the stock, and but it was defeated. And Vanderbilt made $3 million in the process. That was in the 1860s. That's a lot of money. All right, number seven largest, Herbalife. In December of 2012, Bill Ackerman, managing director of Pershing Square Capital Management, initiated a short position on the stock of Herbalife Nutrition, the California-based dietary supplements com company. In a three-hour presentation at an investor conference, Ackerman described the reasoning behind his move and called the nutrition firm a pyramid scheme which was destined to go to zero. Ackerman, over the course of the next six, year, six years, took huge losses and was eventually to give up his short position in his firm. Even though Herbalife Nutrition was fined $200 million by regulators for fraudulent practices in the years following the Ackerman presentation, the company still managed to turn fortunes around by improving revenues and cash generation. Ackerman was further hit by rival Carl Icahn, who runs Icon Capital LP, he, he took a long position in Herbalife as Ackerman shorted it. Icon acquired a more than 25% stake and called out Ackman in the media for shorting the stock. An intense feud followed, which only was settled in 2018 when Ackman was forced to relinquish his remaining short position in Herbalife. It is estimated that Ackerman lost close to $1 billion over the course of six years as a result of his short position, while Icon gained the same amount. All right, we'll leave that a go. Number six, Kalo Bios. 
Martin Shkreli, often called one of the most hated men in America for raising the price of AIDS-related drug uh, something by 5,000%, was also involved in one of the most famous short squeezes of all time. Shkreli, now serving a prison sentence for securities fraud, took over biotech firm Kalo Bios in November of 2015, as the firm was more than $6 million in debt, and the sole drug it was working on had failed. As short sellers tried to take advantage of the dire financial state, Shkreli jumped in and acquired more than 70% of the shares causing the stock to jump 10,000% in five days. However, Kalo Bios did not make much of an impact after the takeover, with share prices dropping quickly. From a low of $0.44 cents per share in November 15, the stock dropped to, jumped to $14 a share by November 18, as panic short sellers scrambled. For cover following this Shkreli takeover. By November 23, Kalo Bio stock had jumped to $45 a share. Then it dropped to 20. And then it rallied to 45. All right, the five biggest shorts. Number five, GameStop. You know all about that one, so I won't read it to you. But it went from $5 to almost $325 in six months. Uh, God, ad advertisements. Number four, Alibaba Group, 2017. The most famous short selling event in the stock history of Chinese firm research by S3 partners showed that short sellers of Alibaba had lost close to $10 billion throughout the year. One hundred and thirty five hedge funds in the database held stakes worth $15 billion. I'm trying to see the what the price action did. Anyway, you know Alibaba. Number three biggest short sale, uh, short squeeze of all time, AMC. AMC. Um, the stock climbed more than 25, 2,500%. Uh, and then number two biggest short squeeze of all time, according to this article, Tesla. Short sellers lost close to $40 billion on Tesla in the first quarter of 2021. Number one of all time, P money, um, Volkswagen, Porsche, involved in the most famous short squeeze of all time in the middle of the 2008 financial crisis. Vendelin Vidaviking, chief of Porsche, signaled his intent to take over Volkswagen. His stake in the firm soon reached 35%. The shares of Volkswagen were classed in two categories. Chaos ensued. The share price of the car maker climbed to euros $999. Made Volkswagen the largest, one of the largest companies in the world briefly. All right, those are the top 10. I don't know, you can do your own research, but um, I don't know if any of those happen during crashes. I really don't, but hey, Girthmark. I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. 
our three main weapons are fear, surprise, and almost fanatical devotion to the Pope. Yeah, I think finger, I think Steve Mertz, that's the best thing you just, well, I don't know about January. That's the ones I would do, but you may be, people should look at February, March, but I think finger, I agree with you, Steve. I think something's going on. It feels like something's going on in finger, the way it's traded. Uh, howdy, 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 hey, Jennifer. A la di la di la di, a la di la di o, a la di la di la di, a la di la di la. I think I think she's dead. No, I'm not. Let me see this, Bill Cooper. Speculation on S one with NBH and any other sentiment. Uh, the S1, I read it, unless there's a new one. The S1 has nothing to do with the settlement, uh, but it does have to do with the, I can't remember the name, but uh, uh, they were making this special distribution to people that move over to AST. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas, uh, Bill Cooper, and Happy Hanukkah to... Um, many and uh, all happy Hanukkah to all. And I don't know that there's anything hap else happening right now, but when we get closer, we'll wish the other things. Uh, happy Kwanzaa and uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know anything else right now. Anyway, I don't, Bill Cooper, I don't expect that there's going to be a big settlement this year. How's that for a call? in next bridge and if i had to do kind of an over under on on six months from now i would which one would i do uh i guess i would do the over i think they're going to take the majority of next year what you could see is a like a framework that everyone agrees, and then the lawyers spend months duking it out in the fine print. That could happen, and that could happen pretty quickly. But I, I, I don't see any settlement happening. Uh, I, I just don't see it. I think they'll once it goes into two thousand and twenty-four. What's the rush? That's what I think. Um, but don't despair. Nextbridge is moving forward and Nextbridge is creating value. So the more time they take, the bigger the cost to the criminals and the, the somnolent uh, Wall Street banks. What? Take that screen down, screenshot down or move it out from in front of your face. Oh, the one I was reading? Yeah. I don't know. I got to get a better computer, Spiny, and I'll get there. We can't see you. Uh, do I know what happened to the Aubrey Warrants? Um, uh, you couldn't buy them. They were uh, trying to remember. I studied them briefly, like for 20 minutes. But they you weren't able to buy them. So they were allocated, I think, to the Aubrey insiders. And uh, I don't know what happened to them. I do know that CAUD has warrants. So it's possible, Nikolai, that uh, Aubrey warrants became CAUD warrants. Let me, let me, let me, uh, find out i kind of lost interest because you weren't able to buy them but i'll i'll see what i can i can i'll see what i can find out 
I'm not going to do it right now because it's almost four o'clock. Let's quickly look at some of the prices as we go into the close. Um, CAUD, 152. Go, go, go. Um, it is uh, 494,000 shares, 151, uh, 150 by 152. That could be time to rock and roll. MMAT is up. It's at 0 0.0708. I am a little leery there because it seems like the board doesn't really want to honor. I don't, I just reading between the lines, I could be wrong, doesn't want to honor what shareholders know. Uh, secondly, the whole governance issue is big. In other words, if the criminals want to win the vote, I think they can win the next vote by, by, by what? Cheating. Um, the stock's up, it's perfect for them to take advantage of that and drive it down. On the other hand, I think it's terrific what shareholders are doing. Awareness is increasing. And, you know, I love the products uh, that MMAT has, particularly the one that has a fiber, has a, uh, I forget the term, but they have this thing that they can put in a battery that allows the, the heat and the chemicals, I guess, or whatever's there, to transfer without blowing up blowing up the batteries and it's state of the art it's ahead of anyone else so i i like mmat just that darn financing logic is uh wow it's cheap oh my gosh 0 Yeah, they're going to try to drive it down. I made the prediction that they'd get it to a penny, but did I wait for a penny? Hell no. I bought I bought uh, higher than this. Every time I buy Logic, I overpay. But my average is 21 cents, 21.4 cents a share. But anyway, that's I think that's one to buy. Um, this gentleman here the other day pointed out NXU. It's still on my screen. 395 million shares traded. Wow. Uh, 0 0.0226. It's up it's up 15%. Um, they're in a strategic, uh, they just announced a, yesterday a strategic partnership with Lynx Motors. Question is, did you get crammed down? Uh, uh, 3 million in NXU shares. Well, anyway, I don't have time, but on the face of it, it's not a cram down, so that might be good. Um, but I didn't study it closely. Uh, let's look at CAUD again. 152. We have 154 ask. Let's look at vocal, close our eyes. Ooh, that's not pretty. That ain't pretty at all. 0 0.0055 on the bid for 129,000 shares. The ask is 0 0.006, 250,000 shares. And you've got to know what goes on down here. If a market maker can trade in between that, or just use trading there, <clears throat> it's 50% profit every time he can buy when somebody sells and sell when somebody buys. It is just a money-making machine for the market makers and others. Uh, HNRC, another cheap one, 0 0.0245, 0 0.024 to 0.026, 1.45 million shares traded. Yearly high on that stock is 84 cents, and we're at the yearly low right now. This one is you want to talk about a thinly traded stock. Go Logic is 30 cents by 58 cents. Last trade 33 cents, and the volume. 
300 shares. On HNRC, two reasons to be interested. The net asset value is 62 cents a share by published uh, uh, earnings report. And they are going to either distribute the entirety of their non-core asset sales of 15 cents a share or some part of it. And it's either going to be cash or stock. If it's cash, it's interesting. If it's stock, it'll it'll hurt the company, in my opinion. Um, but the risk there is, did they do toxic dilutive financing? And I don't know. I tried to search it, and I don't think so. But the benchmark's in there. Benchmark is in there. And uh, I've con tried to reach out to the CEO. I can't find out. So that's the big risk in that one. Uh, NVOS, $1.15, that had done a split. So we'll go by the 52-year high low. The stock has been as high as $5.38 over the past year and as low as $0.69. Cents. So it's trading roughly double its low for the year. GTII, 44 and a half cents, 0.435 by 0.449, uh, down two cents, 359,000 shares. Um, let me look at GT, GDC quickly. GTDC is 276. Uh, 97,000 shares, and let's quickly look at Finger. Finger's 410. So it's pulled back from when I was enthusiastic the other day, but the ask is 435. And it was high as 450 today. So anyway, I think Finger has market strength for whatever reason it, you can't i can't convince you of that today but it feels like somebody's accumulating finger and now it just popped up to 416 so i think if finger starts to run gtii will be stronger and uh let me let me just show you one thing here As the days dwindle down, there's not many more days of tax loss selling left. It's these days that you have to add to these positions, in my judgment, before January. I think several of these stocks and other stocks that I'm not even listing could have really sharp rallies by the end of January, beginning of February. It's called the January effect. Half a denarii for me bloody life story. Well, CB, I didn't, frustrating. I was there for a couple of hours. And he, he was a great surgeon, but he asked me all sorts of questions. And at the end of the day, I wasn't clear if the intent was for me to ever have the operation, but he told me, let's not do it today or let's not decide today. That's what he said. Um, I need to speak to your eye doctor. And then I have to choose between all these different lenses I have to answer all these questions. I have to read read all this, all that, and then I. This is my recovery period checklist. It goes on for I think it goes on for at least two weeks, and then these are all the side effects, blurry vision, glare, light sensitivity, floaters, 
nausea, red eye, irritation. All in all, it sounds really swell. All right. Yeah, I can talk about vocal, Alfred, even though I think sometimes you're here to, you're here, anyway. I don't know anything specific about vocal. I've spoken about it several times in the last few days. I lost uh, at least $150,000 in CRTD, which is the predecessor to vocal. I called on the day, I, I called my people close to it and said, "Not it wasn't Jeremy. I called in on that Friday and I said, you know, this doesn't feel like it's going to work. And I think the stock was $1.52, $1.49, something like that. I think I lost more. By the way, I think I'm, I'm trying to uh, shield myself from the fact that I lost a lot more than that. I might have lost a lot more than that. I owned a lot. I bought a lot of that stock. Um, GTII offered $3.33 in stock to acquire CRTD and make uh, Jeremy the CEO, Jeremy Frommer. He, he didn't like the deal. And he canceled the deal or he retraded the deal and GTII canceled that Friday, I think after the close or or close to the close. The stock, I think, immediately went to like 60 cents, then 35 cents. Smart people just got out. I hung on a little bit longer to see what happened. And I think I might have gotten out at uh, 20 cents or 15 cents. I bought some back around four and five, five, four, five, and six cents. Um, and I have in share amounts i have a large position but it's it's been destroyed i do not think uh alfred vocal can recover i don't do not think it can recover they took financing from jeff easton at lint partners who says oh i don't do it i i'm, I'm not a short seller i might have syndicated the stock to somebody he's a liar in my judgment uh, they they took money from Kurt Kramer and Seth Kramer. Same, I could give you the same riff about them. Jeremy does not believe that this kind of counterfeiting and criminality is happening. He's very comfortable, apparently, with Jeff Easton. Good guy. He tells me he's not doing it. I'm, I'm making up this quote. Uh, I'm going to believe him. Well, the fact is, uh, the criminals counterfeited that stock into oblivion. And I think it's seller box now. I don't see any way out of these prices. Am I selling? I haven't yet. But would I sell just to take a tax loss? Probably not. I'll probably just ride this one out because uh, there it's such a little amount of money now uh, at these prices. But I expect vocal to go lower and never recover like dbmm like uh there's others hnr that rnva stock that's where i think it's headed now i like jeremy Frommer very much i consider him courageous i consider him honest i think he has a lot of integrity i think he is fighting the criminals he has this blind spot Jeff Easton's a good guy. I'm making up that quote, by the way. Um, the problem, Alfred, with, with Vocal is they have a burn rate. And in order to generate revenue, they have to have these employees. So how is he going to raise money? Well, he's raising it by raising money in some sort of uh, quasi-bond type deal tied to revenues. That's actually a very clever strategy, I think. But the problem is, unless your revenues really accelerate 
you're actually diluting the value of your revenue to shareholders. But I like it. He's thinking outside the box. He's not taking another crappy deal. The other thing is uh, th they have a huge sunk cost. And that's the problem. Sunk costs are just what they sound like. It's gone. It's meaningless. But I think they have a sunk cost of $70 million in their technology and platform. Well, I'm not smart enough to know what it's like in the content business. But if that $70 million created a high barrier to entry for competitors, if it claimed the beachhead more quickly than others, that's a significant investment that could lead to revenue gains. The only thing that's going to save Vocal, in my judgment, is massive, accelerating revenue gains that scare the shite out of the shorts. Otherwise, I think they control it, and uh, I think it's headed to seller boxing. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I mean, he I've never seen anything like it. He, he actually called shareholders and told them to sell the stock. He wanted the hot money out of the stock. All right, okay, okay. And he may have seen, in fairness to him, he's probably privy to things I don't know anything about. He may have seen a reason that he needed to not merge into GTII, but he would have been the CEO. And the whales that were in both stocks would have funded whatever he wanted I think, I mean, they had they had the most to gain. Well, you know what? Cows eat vegetables. Or I'm going to, this is all confusing stuff I don't need to understand. Robert Armstrong, thank you. I think Robert Armstrong was the tall guy, or was he the, there were two guys. I can't remember, doesn't matter. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um uh not to stretch it out anyway i'm just going to tell you you can look at the news stories for logic a year ago logic announced that they were going to do this aubrey spack deal and that they were going to sell data logic to aubrey spack at the time aubrey spack was despacked into the new co collective audience logic intended to sell its shell its shell to a company that and and it's in, it's it was called privco worth 250 million dollars they let that one expire they they went through a whole another set of candidates and uh it became clear, although not announced, that they had centered in on a really good candidate, which would be announced simultaneously as the DSPAC. Somehow, I don't know how, they had a chance to do a great rollout. They had more than a year to get it done. And there's I don't I can't think of one thing that could have gone wrong that to be avoided that they avoided. But anyway, they didn't make that announcement. It was expected, but they didn't make it. Turns out that the lawyers for the company, being ever cautious, ever pain in the ass, uh, took a long time getting all the T's and I's dotted. So my understanding is that contract got signed by the company that wished to acquire Logic. Well, Brent was on here two Sundays ago, and he said we were approached by several companies worth 
you know, I, I forget the exact number, 650 to $700 million each. So you snooze, you lose. And I think uh, Logic decided to move on from the second company. Well, now they're screening three or four other companies. I understand they have made their selection. I have not heard that directly from the company. So what happens, Dre1223? Well, when you pick a new company, you got to negotiate it. And what, what else do you have to do? Due diligence. Yeah, due diligence. And what else does that entail? Audit. Yeah, you got to do an audit. You got to hire auditors. You got to look at the books. You got to kick the tires. You got to check the records. You got to do all that. I believe the company could announce today a acquisition of the shell, a reverse merger, but it would the news would say it was non-binding, non-binding. You would go, oh, it's non-binding. It's going to fall through just like that law firm with GTII. Just say it's all, everything's a fraud. Everything's baloney. So I think what happened, and I'm not saying you pers personally, I mean, you, you as everybody, um, uh, I think what happened is they made the decision to wait until the agreement is definitive. Well, what does that wait mean? It means an audit. How long does an audit take? I don't effing know. I would say it takes at least <clears throat> a month. But if it's a $750 million company, I don't know of the size. I could see it taking 90 days. That's the problem, Dre, is uh, you're going to have to wait. But I think the opportunity to buy it is over these days. What is it worth per share eventually? I'd say 50, 60, 70 cents a share. But will people believe it? I don't know. I have no idea. Will the criminals keep selling? Probably. Um, we will own an eighth, give or take, of a New York Stock Exchange company or NASDAQ worth almost a billion dollars, three quarters of a billion dollars, I'm guessing. And it'll probably, because the reverse split was voted on, this is not a reverse split to help the criminals. It doesn't help the criminals. It will, uh, well, I suppose, I suppose on the margin it might help somehow. But they're going to be so F-U-C-K-E-D, I, I don't see how it helps. Um, uh, because the, the maintenance requirement will be more than exceeded by the value of the stock. I'll have to work that out on a piece of paper. But the point is, We'll own an eighth of a company that's maybe trading at $45 on the New York Stock Exchange, a share. The criminals won't be able to destroy that. Institutions will be buying it. I have no idea what industry it'll be in. So is it worth the trade? Well, the risk is two cents to the downside. That's the risk. I did look. I did look into NXU, uh, but not deeply, fisherman, because I had to go get my eye operation. And last night, um, I was worried about it, but I did look at it. Uh, I do not have the answer, and I'll try to do that. I have a meeting. I'll try to do that later tonight or tomorrow morning. I do not have the answer if they did a toxic financing. The deal they just did doesn't look like it's a cram down. It looks like a good deal. So um, I'm I'm not ready to jump in, but it fits the parameters, fisherman, of <clears throat> a candidate which you buy over the next two weeks as everyone else is selling for tax reasons, and it could have a rally in January. 
it could be a very nice longer term hold. I have it here. I did look at it, but I, I don't think I looked at it enough to say what I'm worried about is whether they did a toxic financing and I have to go through filings. It could take me an hour to go through that hour and a half. And I just didn't, I haven't had the time or I just, I just, I, I guess when I woke up in the middle of the night, I could have done it, but I was just tossing and turning, worried about my eye and other things, but I'll get on it. I'm sorry. I didn't get it done last night better. All right, I'm, I'm going to try to close in 10 minutes. <laughs> One person says that he calls me his Irish friend. But the fact is, the Irish is my dad's side. The Italian is my mother's side. And there's more to it than that. So I don't know. <laughs> Oh, not legal advice. Could you be any more corny? I like it. Just opened my water and electric bill at the same time. It shocked me. Yeah, my dad always said, lawyers are liars. My dad always said that. And liars are lawyers. But I don't think every lawyer is a liar. And the question is, can you lie while you lay? I think you can, but you can't lay while you lie. And I think you can't, you can lie while you lawyer, but I'm not sure you can lawyer while you lay. Whatever. I can't make that work. All right. Well, that's interesting. They don't have any clean shares. They're, they might as well admit that's fraud. But it what's really going on, I think $150 is a, a reasonable price. They have to get your signature on a stock power or a release. They have to match it up with the letter um, releasing the legend from GTII. They have to take the physical stock certificate, which they might have at one omnibus certificate in street name. They have to take that, take your signature or it's in, they can subdivide it, send it to the transfer agent. It's done physically. It's not electronic uh, or at least part of that trip is physical. So it has to use FedEx. I think it's end time. I think it's a reasonable price to pay. You might be able to get them down to $75. That would be better. All right. I'm 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 going over. It's a little bit funny. This feeling inside. I'm not one of those who can easily hide. But the thing is, what you really, what you've got to know, those are the bluest eyes I've ever seen. You can tell everybody this is your song. Now that it's done, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is while you're in the world. That's amazing. You, 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 um, you flew with him. Wow. I was once in uh, the first class lounge in London, British Air, with my friend. We were going somewhere. I forget where. 
maybe to uh, maybe to uh, Arizona or Chicago. I don't know. But in the first class lounge was the boss. And why the reason I remember it, he was getting orange juice. He caught my eye and I caught his and he just looked at me and kept looking at me. And I thought, wow, does he recognize me? Um, maybe from one of his concerts or uh, what is it? But he kept, he just kept looking at me and he reminded me of one of my uncles and, um, anyway, I, I, I really look up to him, except he's gotten a little bit on the wacko side, but I look up to him and, uh, I, anyway, I always remember. And it went on for like, we, it was a crowded place. Uh, I would say it was about an hour and 15 minutes. As, anyway, that was my experience being, I didn't go up and get his signature or anything. I didn't take a picture. Screen door slam. I know. I always choose high maintenance. There's something wrong with my picker. Screen door slams. Mary's dress waves. Like a vision, she dances across the porch while the radio plays. Roy Overson sangs for the lonely. Hey, it's you. And I want you only. <laughs> I'm not reading that out. Um, he's doing well. His eyesight isn't good. His hearing's not all that good. I No, David, I, I went in two hours. They're going to schedule a different time, schedule a different time. Wow, Colonel. I had several friends that used to go see him uh, in New Jersey. I spent a summer in Avalon on the beach. Um, and I met people that would, you know, had had followed him. Um, wow, that's so cool. That is so cool. Um, three and a half hours. I remember when he would sing, he would just keep going and going and going. He amazing, uh, like Willie Nelson. All right, KYP. Did I see Mark Bazile, the clerk of the court for the Southern District of Court, just entered the clerk's default? Excellent. So, Crappy Barra, there's going to be a judgment filed against Crappy Barra. That's good. Well, vocals already dropped. What else is there to watch? I mean, vocals already dropped. I don't see how he recovers it. He would have to get an investor to come in at at a do, you know fifty cents or a dollar a share. It's not going to happen. Or he'd have to get the revenues to accelerate ahead of his need for capital for the burn rate. And as it accelerates in a hockey stick way he might be able to start buying back shares but his buddy jeff easton and and jeff easton's clients it's all she wrote you trust these bastards they're gonna steal you blind they are psychopathical it's a new word I got fired from the keyboard factory. They said I wasn't putting in enough shifts. I'll tell you that joke fell flat. Thank you very much, Mama Duck. Thank you, Mama Duck. That's very kind of you, Mama Duck. You know one thing? 
you have to be kind to your web-footed friends. Or a duck might be somebody's mother. Just remember that. 1220. Now, they, get, they always get another extension. Always get another extension. Wow, not legal advice is well connected. It must be all his comedy jokes. Ham didn't dial in, so you got stuck with me. Ah, my computer won't click. GME's in there. Yeah, it was number GME and AMC were in the top five. I've tried to answer. I let you down. I don't have a specific answer. I have to go through filings, which you could do at the SEC website and find out if they took a toxic convertible uh, dilutive note. The stock is trading as if they did. But if they did not, it's a it it looks like a good company. That's my answer now, but I gotta find out. When these stocks start trading at three cents, two cents, one cents, and lower, all you gotta know is counterfeiters are out there, maybe, and you gotta find out. In the case of the stocks we we know better, we can act with better knowledge. You brought me NXU to my, yesterday. And I like it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know the story. I don't know the people. I don't know any of the whale investors. I, I just don't, I don't have confidence. To me, the biggest risk in NXU is they did a toxic convertible note with warrants and tranches with someone. Better companies have been destroyed by the criminals on Wall Street. I have to find that. And it will take going to the SEC website, clicking on every filing and date, scrolling down. I just have to, it's going to take time. And I did look through the news stories. I did look at the charts, all of that. And, and I just read earlier the last, the yesterday's news story, which looks pretty good to me because it doesn't seem to be a cram down. They, they seem to have linked up was it Lynx Automotive? They linked up with a pretty good company. But anyway, I'll, I'll try to do better. Um, he had, Ham never came, never came on. David, I don't know the number, but I would, on this, on these pages, uh, about two or three weeks ago, they said that there were 135 million shares at AST. What was not clear was, is that 135 million of the 165 million, or is that 135 million of the 255 million extent? Um, if that 135 is as compared to 255 million, then you got, there's a lot more to go. But to be conservative, because I think there's, it's, there's going to ultimately be a panic to get in. So to be conservative, I am assuming what the people here told me is that the 135 million uh, at AST? I've never seen the printed number. I saw it in one of in one of the uh, lives. I'm assuming it's against the 165 million uh, reserved for the next bridge transfer. If I'm wrong, and it's 135 against 255 million. Then there's there's some more fluff in there, and it's unknowable how much it is. It could be a bigger number, 
but like I said, David, I'm trying to use the smallest spread, not because I'm trying to exaggerate anything, it's just to be conservative because if that 30 million disappears, but it could be 50 million, it could be 60 million. I don't rightly know, and I don't know who to ask. I just took the data from here. But if it's 30 million and people start moving all of a sudden, um, it could the seats could get sold out. I don't see that happening because almost everyone keeps telling me they want to wait and see what happens with MMTLP. I think the trigger that's going to cause the rush is if and when the SCC approves the distribution of the uh, over, I don't think it was called an override. Anyway, the 10%, the piece of that other project. Yeah, I, li I think 450 and finger is some sort of Maginot line, but I think it'll break it. What crappy Vera put out? It happened again. I'll look it up, David. I didn't know that. <laughs> All those side effects are from the same online. That's exactly right. Santa run. No ham today. I think Jeremy is in the bed with the shorts. You just said he knows Lynn. Yeah, he does both. He took deals from both. That's I know he I know he's. Well, I understand he's pretty close to Jeff Easton. There's pictures of them together. But if you look at the filings, they took he took money from both Lind and the Kramers. That's a good point, actually, Carter's World. You, you, you're smarter than I am. That's a good point, Carter's World. So they he might it's a good point. It's nice to meet you, Gloria. Normally one would normally one would have to go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. This is not an invitation, Gloria. Normally, one would have to go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. It's, it's a, what did he say? It's a uh, evening dress. No, he said it's not, it's not formal. Steal something casual. Steal something casual. Ah. I can tell my computer's heating up because it's freezing over here. All right, mama. Hey, mama, mama. No, 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 no. Hey, mama, mama. Kit Kitteridge, P A N W, cybersecurity, no tax loss from that sector. P A N W. That's right, Kit Kitteridge. And I think that's why they put out that distribution. And ultimately, when everyone moves, there's no confusion anymore. And you're exactly right. It will be proof positive. Yeah, I had, I went in eight o'clock. I slept late. I got there. And did you did did you see the doctor? Yes, and he has seen me. But there was something that he he told me, let's not decide today. I have to speak to your doctor about something. I, I don't are are you 
have you been monofocal all your life? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. I can, you know how to whistle, don't you? Put your lips together and blow. Doesn't believe in censorship yet blocks people who comments he doesn't like. Rolling on floor laughing. You can't make this up. Rolling on floor laughing. Well, come on. Um, I My mission statement when I signed on was I want to help people not be exposed to FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and to just the tactics of the criminals. I'm not saying you're part of that. But when comments are negative and they're and they're just as they say nothing, yeah. Every now and then, I I just I can't. We don't do crazy here. Sell crazy down the hall. We don't do crazy here. I don't do the fudster stuff here to the best of my ability. Uh, but Alfred. I haven't blocked you. I try to answer. People get mad at me when I answer some of the negative questions. So, so I'm not perfect. <laughs> My uncle always told me that stupid crime. I was, well, I had a, a friend. Um, in the office next to mine and he his father was a judge and he always told this story he was a dry guy he said uh his father once had a some sort of criminal uh in his court and the the jury found him guilty and the judge sentenced this man to something like three life sentences served consecutively and the guy was you know 48 and he said your honor your honor i can't do that i'll never make it i'm not gonna live that long and um my friend's father the judge said well that's all right son just do the best you can Ham didn't talk. Yeah, I will. I'll, I feel badly that I let you down. Uh, I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. Um, I've been told, I, I always suggest to people, just go public. I Private, sorry, just go private. And the answer I always get is it's too expensive. But I like your I like your I like your idea. I'm not I I agree with you. You might miss out on the squeeze somehow, but I like that idea. So I'm with you. And then if it's private, the, but leader, the still the same problem prevails. If they need to raise money, you've got to look at well, <laughs> the problem is that when the criminals drive a stock price down, we all do it. Like right now, if Jeremy came to you and said, I, I need to raise money, and you ask him, what, how much? And he says, half a million. What, what do you, what stock price? And he says to you, I want to raise it at a dollar a share. You're going to say, wait a minute, it's selling under a penny. We all do that. We all do that. What we have to understand is the value in the stock market is all fraud. There's no price discovery. There's no random walk down Wall Street. It's all fraud. But we've been trained that somehow the market forces come up with the ideal price. Everything's priced in. It's all fraud. So if it went private, the longer he could go private, 
he could do his own analysis, get third party, do his salesmanship, and then raise money at higher prices. But the risk is leader landscape. If he has to raise money at a penny, what's equivalent of a penny a share, we we would still get crammed down. So it's not a panacea. But um, I think it's a good idea. You got it's gamemanship at this point, and you've got to you you've got to tip over the chessboard. You've got to just say no. I'm not playing it that way because these criminals have sussed out every single angle of what normally a CEO would do. And Jeremy's already trying to do creative things and you got to give him credit for that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Well, leader, it's not, if you read this document, and I have, and I've shown it to you, about the savvy, the savvy, um, anyway, if you read it, what Hal Mintz, age 52, has done, uh, the one thing the SEC leaves out this isn't a good example because there was no stock to trade but and the the money didn't change hands then but um, I have a finger chart somewhere. Let me see if I have it here. Anyway, the fact is, leader landscape, it's against the law to sell stock beforehand. There is no stock. But are you telling me the criminals follow the rules? They sell the stock before the note. I believe they sell the stock as soon as the CEO says, okay, I'm interested. Boom, they start selling and selling. You see it in the stock prices. Now you can say, well, you can't prove it. All right, you can't prove it. But it's there time after time after time in the stock prices. It, when they do tranches, they sell the stock down and give you your own money. It's almost as if the over-the-counter market no longer is a mechanism for companies to raise capital on their own. So these criminals come in and facilitate the raising of the capital by taking all of the market cap of the companies. We need to bring back the uptick rule. We need to go back to eights and steenies and 30 seconds. We have to have real market makers. And if you're going to do a financing, I believe, with a company that's a micro cap, I believe you have to make sure there is a real market maker or make the market yourself. You, you, I'm a little confused by it, but Busy has explained to me that they short in the open and they do the buys in the dark pools. According to him, it doesn't matter wherever you buy it, but Busy's point is they don't want to show any upticks during the day. You know, you got to get rid of all of that. I think you got to get rid of the Merrill Lynch rule. I think you've got, if, You've got to know, you've got to disclose who bought into the financings. You've got to know who is selling. Know your customer. It's a basic rule. Enforce the locate rule. Enforce settlement. They don't do any of it. So anyway. A toxic note cannot be shorted before the lender gives the money. That It's weird. That's both true. That's both true if you read the rules and it's not true in practice. They do it all. They do it every single time. 
they sell the stock before they give the money. They never put their own money at risk. I think in the case of Aubrey SPAC here, it's possible that Polar or one of those hedge funds put up the original money in the SPAC and then they take it all out. So they just had the time cost of money. But what did they get in return? The stock was 38. It was at 27. They call the NASDAQ to stop trading. And then they start selling. And does this look like they sold and bought back? Sold and bought back? Sold and bought back? Sold? It's just straight down. It's just straight down. And the volume, look at this volume. Anyway, it shouldn't be the case that we have to speculate on what's going on. If you want... Full transparency, Gary Gensler, disclose all the numbers, and then investors could make their honest decisions. When when uh, Polar or its clients start selling stocks that don't exist to customers, it's not registered stock. And whoever's buying it doesn't know a use of proceeds, doesn't know a cap table, doesn't know Jack Spratt. Anyway. Oh, it's just endless. Can he find that many old men that want old collection of Hustler? I think a lot of older men would like hus Hustler clippings. It's not Hustler, it's Penthouse. And um, believe it or not, I think images, the standards of beauty have changed. Um, I looked at some of those pictures on that web, you know, on the... Where was it? Was it on his website, what he has for sale? I wouldn't want to own any of those pictures. Those women aren't my type. What's your type? Uh, what's your type? Dumb? Uh, uh, bimbo? I forget what she said. James Bond says to Vesper. Well, you're not my type. And she says, what's your type? Unintelligent. And yeah, she said something. He said, no, available. Yeah, yeah, leader. I think you have a good idea. That's a good one. Can, is everyone going to be a punster? A pun? There's nothing to see here. All right. I got to the bottom of the list, and I'm going to end it here. I have to go walk my dog. I have a meeting later. And uh, I thank everyone turning in. I'm sorry Ham didn't come on. Let's just let's – let's quickly look. Fingers up 10% in the aftermarket. That's pretty good. Let's see if CAUD is doing anything. <laughs> it's down in the aftermarket. But it closed at 152, 142, up 23 cents, up 18%. Let's look at the gentleman's uh, NXU. NXU is in the red after the close, but it... I'm a little confused. Closing price says 20%, but it shows zero, zero, zero. I do like the um, NXU engages in strategic, with strategic partnership with Lynx Motors. The, I don't see the high low in the year. That's weird. Oh, there it is. Low on the year two cents, high in the year 1130. See, we're down at the lows. It could be it could be a January effect. You buy it here at two cents and it goes to 20 cents, 10 cents. It could be. 
I got a new iPhone for my girlfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> I like that one. All things considered, it was a pretty good trade. I like that one. I like that. All right. Sorry, Ham didn't come on. And uh, I can't think of anything else. Um, uh, I wish everybody a good night, good evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday the 15th. After tomorrow's trading, we have less than two weeks left for the tax loss selling season. And there'll be holidays and all of that. So um, anyway, peace, love, and happiness. I wish each of you the best. And I thank you very much. I thank, thank Mama Ducks. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.